Hello, everybody. My name is Dio Morales, your host of the Gold Squadron Podcast, and we're <laughs> we're coming to you live from episode 153. Um, this is the way. Happy May the Fourth. My co-hosts today are Marcel, Hot Mike, Manzano, Bobby. Put the razor down and stop trying to shave the cat. Oh, what? <laughs> Will, get your puns ready, Hagwood. And I don't even have one ready. <laughs> get yours ready, though. And Ryan, I am one with the Force, Staniszewski. And the Force is with me and all of us. Yay, May the 4th. That's right. That's right. Okay, now I can. We we did the intro. I can take this off. I'm having a hard time breathing. Let's <laughs> give me a second. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. What, Cut a slit. What's, <laughs> what's wrong there, Dion Fett? Say that again. What's wrong there, Dion Fett? Dion Fett. That's no. I'm Din Din Jaren. All right. We, we, it's only oh, one. Sh- one people don't know. <gasps> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Spoiler. Ah! <laughs> All righty. So um. Obviously, today is May the 4th, it's Star Wars Day, and I thought it would be a perfect opportunity. Obviously, we all love Star Wars here, or at least enjoy the the lore, whether it's because the game got you more into it, or maybe you were really into Star Wars, and Star Wars is what got you into the game. I think we all like to discuss some Star Wars here, and today is all about that. We will probably touch on X-Wing-related topics, but today's more about your um, your things that you put on the Discord in the question of the week. We put a post out there saying, hey, uh, if you have topics about Star Wars uh, lore connected to X-Wing or not, just drop it in here, and we'll discuss it. We'll get to as many as we can. If we get to into a good discussion about something, we'll let it flow. But uh, today, we're, we're just here to talk about Star Wars and be, be fans. Um, anything is... Uh, nothing's off limits, by the way. So anything in canon. So if you're, like, super worried about something, it's time to probably turn it off. But, we, I mean, at, at this point, probably the, the most spoilerific thing would probably be the last episode of Clone Wars, uh, which came out today. Uh, we'll try to maybe dance around it. I don't think there were any direct questions about it when I looked through it. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, all right, guys. Let's uh, – somebody says, I wish there was a Taco Bell universe. Ew. Not quite. All right, so here we go. We're going to start uh, from the beginning, and I think it's in uh, a pretty good one. So, obviously, Disney has created uh, this The Mandalorian uh, as, a, as, a, as a series on Disney+. Plus. And the first question here from Brian C. is, what character uh, from the movies, or maybe we'll, even, we'll expand it, maybe not even from the movies, would you like to see get their own Disney Plus series? All right, and we know that we're getting Obi Wan Kenobi, and we know that the Mandalorian Part Two is coming out, and we know that um, uh, Cassian Andor is getting his own. Will go. All right. Um, uh, jokingly, I would say Doctor Avazan, uh, just so he could go around <laughs> picking fights with people. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that's a deep cut. But uh, no. Um, if I was being serious, I would take uh, Danny Glover's um, Lando. Mm, yeah. Uh, I, I, could, well, I could watch a whole series of that easily. I like that. I like that. What about you, Marcel? Um, I think we have enough good guys. I'd like to see some, something behind the scenes from, from the Empire. So probably uh, Grand Moff Tarkin, like his, his, uh, his, his coming ups mm. of Grand Moff Tarkin. Yeah, there's there's a pretty sweet book. The, the book Tarkin is amazing. Mm-hmm. I would love to see that. I would. Oh my god, it'd yeah. be so good. Ryan, uh, kind of on the side of Marcel, uh, but more from the light to the dark. I'd like to see um, a little more of Dooku, like Dooku, how he became like the master duelist, and then eventually like how Sidious got to him. Oh, I like that. I like that. Again. There was a, a audio drama. I, I read all the the new canon books, and I've read some of the old canon books. But uh, there's this audio drama, and seeing that on the screen, oh yes, please, that'd be amazing. The Dooku book, so oh, so good. All right, next question here was Jedi Floppy, who asked, "Why is there no General Merrick in X Wing?" So for those of you who don't know who General Merrick is, you'll probably recognize him from this picture. He's the guy from Rogue One. 
All right, the X-Wing pilot. I mean, why? Because FFG hasn't done it yet. But I mean, I think, would you guys agree with the advent of the pilot packs? Like, why would we not end up seeing this eventually? Like, that's just free, isn't it? Yeah, if they th feel like the only like competition was that they chose to do uh, Salas Renegades instead of Blue Squadron. Mm. Yeah, and that might it might dilute uh, uh, the. Or I, don't, I don't know if dilute the right word, but it might make too many pilots um, for the the standard X wing. Okay. Though I'd love to see it. Um, it's obviously it's the name of the game, so we. <laughs> uh, I don't think it would dilute it that much. Yeah, um, I think it's less likely to show up in a squadron pack because a lot of the blue squad and the U wing and stuff from Rogue One is there. Besides, obviously, this main pile that a lot of people focus on, I definitely see it as more of like a card pack, like a, a second card pack we get in the future, and we get general merrick in that instead because i get the, i get the feeling if they do a squadron pack for the rebels it's going to be more rogue squadron cool cool uh, we're going to go to the twitch chat here and a uh, couple of topics that are there which i, I really like so uh joff sanders brought up the fact that today uh lucasfilm announced that uh taika watiti is going to be co-writing and directing a star wars feature film if you don't know who that is uh one of the films that he did was jojo rabbit um but also probably if you're just in star wars universe he directed the finale of the, Man the mandalorian that last episode which was off the hook. It was so good. So uh, super excited about that. And this leads into a topic that I did see in there. Let's let's a little speculation. All right, a little tin tin foil hat time here. Um, what, like, what do you want to see? Like, we have no idea what the next feature film is going to be we know that there's this like book series uh the uh the, what, what's it called the what republic not the new republic. High republic the high republic there it is so like do we think it's going to be a high republic film what do you think and what do you want ryan i'll let you go first oh man um i think yeah actually now that you put it so i i didn't know if they jump into high republic that quickly i'm i'm kind of i don't think it's a high percentage of uh taika being the guy to do it but looking back on his work directing thor ragnarok and building that c completely juxtaposed like feel of that universe at the time mm -hmm. maybe maybe that's what's what's needed for star wars in that right like you would need to build a new time of that universe so it needs a different feel and, yeah. that, and a, a different feel might be helpful with someone who's a, you know accomplished that in another universe before i like it what do you think marcel uh you know i actually don't don't know um so the, so the, the question just is it about the um just so i got the right question because yeah you were going through a couple of them there so is it like what's the next film going to be about? Sure. I mean, or it was it was. Do you have any reaction to to the director about, and mm -hmm. and then part B of the question was speculate. What do you think the movie could be, or what would you All want right. it to be? Um, my reaction to the to the director. I liked the finale of Mandal uh, the Mandalore. Of course, the Thor Ragnarok. I haven't seen Jojo Rabbit, but Thor Ragnarok, I thought was a little bit too comedic for my you know just it felt a little too silly okay so um but but uh, but again seeing the the finale kind of uh, even with the finale like the little punching of the <laughs> baby yoda you know there was a lot of comedy in it so i'm assuming that they're gonna try to keep it uh upbeat and friendly and and, and comedic as far as um what it could be about i don't know i, I think the, the main thing that that uh, one of the things that they talked about was trying to go away as, from force users and try to tell the story of the universe from a non-jedi or sith or force sensitive um perspective so i'm not even sure that it would be with the you know with the high republic or anything like that it might just be um some type of um standalone story within the within the universe similar to kind of like rogue one was where it you, it, it makes sense because it fits in, but it may not fit in as perfectly into the puzzle. It's like something that occurred in, 
and tells like a different story maybe i don't know or maybe just a, movie, a whole movie about jar jar <laughs> i'm sure he could do it i'm sure he could pull it off <laughs> all right will any any closing thoughts on the topic um um uh, actually uh right before marcel said it, i actually thought that ragnarok was like uh the jokes and the pacing and the action um and like the uh very much like like very pg you know what i mean um vibe of uh ragnarok uh fits in almost like beat for, for beat with star wars right um and i've had now 20 seconds to come up with an idea and uh it's gonna be uh it's gonna be uh younglings um in the not no like younglings like growing out their braid you know what i mean um okay like trying to become padawans uh in the um in the council or not council but in the order the big dome thing whatever they call it yeah on coruscant and it's essentially just going to be uh, like a high school rivalry movie, <laughs> <laughs> but the different cliques are like different types of Jedi or whatever. Uh, where like the Goths are like using their like black lightsabers and uh, things like the the Jocks all have blue lightsabers. You know what I mean? Working out. Right. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's my that's my twenty second idea. I, I, I'm in. You know what? You you could even make a call back to the Clone War series and you use the kids for from like the kids who are making the star the oh, yeah. their lightsabers there you go yeah there's the wookie one yeah, yeah. there you go <laughs> all right next topic here comes from and will we're gonna we're gonna stick with you uh this one comes from fan kiyoshi and it's actually a really good question that i think affects a lot of us and it's how has playing x-wing and being part of the community changed how you view and or consume star wars content Ooh, I definitely um, over analyze ships now. Um, <laughs> of uh, like, take uh, the Razor Crest for example, right? I'm always looking at. Um, I kept thinking was like, just like waiting to see it bear roll. You know what I mean? Waiting to waiting to see if uh, you know he'll hit the hit the afterburner on it, give a little boost. You know, something like that. Um, so I was uh, look. Uh, I, I see things like kind of in X-wing terms as far as like ships for that. Nice, nice, Ryan. Yeah, pretty similar. Just the whole now that I have X-wing mostly on my mind. Um, it's oh that ship. Uh, it might come in be part of the game. I gotta I'm gonna be excited for it. Um, but the actual like consumption of star wars content and thoughts of everything really hasn't changed a ton um i'll give a little bit of credit to ryan farmer since he's a big filmography guy that he's uh shared plenty of topics discussions and articles that have focused a lot more on the film aspect of star wars that i didn't jump into as much as i would have just been just the pure fandom side of it right so knowing more people in the community opens up more opinions and thoughts to be shared with one another cool yeah, and for me it's been um Complete night and day because I started playing X Wing not because of Star Wars. I started playing X Wing because I liked the mechanics of it. So it could have been um, it could have been Star Trek and that they got introduced to, and it would have been a short lived uh, uh, obsession. But yeah, for me it's been a complete night and day. I've always liked Star Wars. I enjoyed the the, the originals and I enjoyed the prequels, but I wasn't like a Star Wars nerd and I didn't know all of the thing all of the characters and all that i mean i knew the characters from the movies but not outside of the movies or the books or any of the backstory and stuff like that That was my brother conrad he was into that I'm, i wasn't really into it. but now uh, i started watching season one of uh rebels honest i mean i'm enjoying it I'm, I'm enjoying rebels but um i can honestly say i would never have watched rebels if it wasn't for me playing x-wing and just you know becoming more of a fan of star wars because of x-wing um yeah, I would, I would never have watched uh, uh, Rebels and even even Clone Wars. Like, I couldn't get past the first couple seasons of uh, Clone Wars. I'm like, oh, okay, this is boring, and and I stopped. 
Um, and I noticed uh, I was I was watching one of the um, episodes of Rebels yesterday when uh, um, the Grand Inquisitor introduced like the Tie Advanced. Yeah, and I was uh, like watching that show. I'm more excited watching the Ghost, watching the Attack <laughs> Shuttle, watching the Tie Advanced, and I get more excited and and. Uh, I usually watch it like I work out at home, and while I'm working out, like I have it playing. Yeah. And I notice that when there's like a, a, a ship battle or there's a new ship introduced, that I stop working out and I just stare. <laughs> and then as soon as they get back to the story about, hey, Ezra, your parents are X, Y, Z, I'm like, okay, this, let, me, let me go back to work. <laughs> let, me, let me go back to my workout. But um, yeah, it's completely um, changed. Uh, like I, I never would have cared who the heck Wedge is in in um like wedge yeah whatever wedge is like it's like uh isn't that like a taco shell like a wedge or something <laughs> i don't know um yeah doorstop um for myself i was it was interesting so star wars has actually it's funny my mother today sent me pictures from my 10th birthday uh where I had I got a bunch of Star Wars stuff for uh, for my birthday, um, so like I I have been pretty deep into Star Wars for a while, but um, I was I mean I, I've talked about it before like I was bullied a lot in middle school and high school, so like I I didn't have a lot of people to talk about Star Wars with, so I turns out there was there's a whole like sector of like the whole like eu development stuff i never i never even knew most of that existed my star wars exposure was the movies that i got as a kid and then um a couple of video games that my mother ended up buying for me and then uh just as an adult i I really i still enjoyed my my uh you know original trilogy and the things i had been exposed to but when we got X-Wing and I remember like looking through these pilot names and be like, who are these people? And then like digging into those all of a sudden I was like, wait, what? They were writing books and there were comic books and all this stuff that existed for Star Wars. And I have just been like just eating it up. Uh, and my like, like I always had the passion there. I just didn't know that there was more stuff to consume. Um, so that was pretty cool. So that was that was awesome. That's how it affected me. All right, now we have a little bit of a uh, little bit of like Star Wars theory crafting slash alternate realities. All right, you ready? So here's the situation: Mace Windu successfully kills Palpatine before Anakin takes him out. All right. In a few short sentences, who do you think gains control of the Republic slash Empire instead of Palpatine? Because Palpatine is wrecked and dead. Mm. I, I'll take I'll take the easy answer to start. Okay, so um, like. <laughs> If Anakin goes full dark side, right? So he's killed Mace Wind's Mace Windu. Um, like I, there's nobody there to um to bring him back to life. So I don't think Anakin ends up being like. Dar I don't know if Darth Vader exists because he probably just gets sliced up by Obi Wan and ends up dying there anyway. But that uh that Masamita, the blue guy, he I was got some real aggressive vibes from that blue guy you know the guy with like the horns and stuff like that like i, I think he would have ended up being a tyrant slash like bad guy because he he knew what was up with palpatine i'll tell you that he knew and didn't care that's my thought i got an idea do it for it um so i'm basically gonna take everything and make it uh the exact opposite all right go so instead of uh instead of the empire uh outcasting jedi uh, they are in charge of the entire galaxy it becomes like a, almost a theocracy where they're like worshipped almost as gods um but uh padme still hates this idea and still um, breaks up with Anakin because of it. 
right? Anakin's like, oh, we're gods now. And she's like, no, that's not democracy. So she still ends up dying. Darth, so Darth Vader still becomes, like, uh, the bad guy. Um, but he ends up fighting uh, Obi-Wan and Mace uh, throughout the, the next couple of years until eventually he's, he's defeated. Uh, but the galaxy um, is uh, almost ty- tyrannically ruled by the Jedi, trying to keep it, uh, peace throughout the galaxy. They essentially... Ob- peace, quote-unquote. <laughs> yeah, 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 peace. I mean, the Emperor made peace, I guess. Too. <laughs> okay. but, uh, but yeah, I could see the Jedi it, uh, being stuck in those general roles. Like, general is in, like, of an army, right? Mm-hmm. And then basically authoritatively cementing their will upon the galaxy and the only but then that means that the only savior is actually darth vader trying to fight against them oh, okay does darth vader oh man does the darth vader become a good so he's technically guy the good guy yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right all right marcel what do you think i think um yeah i think probably anakin becomes the who he tries to become uh i'd say padme doesn't die i mean all, everything that happened after that kind of uh was was controlled by palpatine so it would anakin would probably still be that that main sith but i don't think it, he would be um quite frankly i don't think he'd be intelligent enough conniving enough to be able to actually execute and like entire galaxy domination he's more of a he's more of a soldier than a general and um yeah so i I don't i don't actually think it would be i think it would be like like characters like darth maul and stuff like that who obviously wouldn't have maybe would have been trained or maybe not by vader at that point it would have been more of a skirmishes rather than a complete galactic empire uh takeover and it's just like you know you guys are talking about it, like reading the books and going from like the old republic to the new republic there's always like these these cycles and repeating factors of um you know the the dark side trying to take over and then they failed and they try to take over and maybe they'd succeed and in one case they succeeded for a thousand years but i think it would it would uh anakin would lose and probably lose without any significant um takeovers and it would just go into like another period of hiding and maybe a few a few hundred years before before things like shifted back to a new palpatine level threat so i basically i think in other words i think anakin would fall on his face not be able to not be able to do it and uh, the the characters that would play out galactic domination by the sith would be characters that we've never heard about because they'd be hundreds of years in the future oh oh okay all right all right so i'm gonna twist it a little bit and say uh mace windu was only be able was only able to successfully kill palpatine because he tapped into a little bit of the dark side so jedi attempt after that happens uh, sort of what people would expect the Jedi attempt a peaceful transition but in the back the entire time um, while the entire galaxy is trying to figure out who should be uh, the new Chancellor and maintain the Republic because that's what the Jedi want to do uh, Mace Windu is trying to have the Jedi maintain order and be the power and do a little bit of behind the scenes uh sabotage um where mace is trying to make sure the jedi are the power uh so we get a little bit of sense of uh not a pure sith but a jedi gone uh mad with power after tapping into the dark side to destroy the sith eventually it gets found out you know that i I don't i haven't figured out how that would all go down but eventually i think the best candidate to become the next chancellor would be bail organa Ooh, okay i like that i like that now here here's another let's let's continue down this rabbit hole here um who else knew about order 66 does darth maul know about order 66 
So I almost thought about well, okay. D- does Some he of this know? This might be a little spoiler for the re- for the most recent Clone Wars episodes. I'm I'm only I only care about the last one, the last one, the ones before okay. that. So, and so fives remember? Yeah. And then uh, Captain Rex had his report that was pushed aside, but I think he reported it to Anakin. Mm. So there's some awareness to that. I thought it'd be a little far-fetched as part of this story, but like maybe Anakin, like maybe Mace's thing about the Jedi taking control, maybe more Jedi start to follow him unknowing that he's doing it in an evil way. They're trying to follow Mace and say the Jedi should be the only ones who turn, who, who are the order. And then Anakin finds out and the clones are still a thing. And then Anakin actually uses Order 66 to still kill the Jedi, but the bad Jedi. There we go. There we go. Like, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Always fun there. All righty. A uh, little bit of digging here, uh, but here we go. Uh, we're going to test our, our, our limits of the EU again. I, want, I, I explained already that I don't, I'm not super deep into it, but I know, I know a little bit. So it says, what, this is from Car- Crazy Vulcan. What old bit of extended universe was your, uh, was your favorite character slash story? And would you want to see anything remade in the modern Star Wars universe? We'll go ahead, and uh, Ryan, we'll start with you. So my only EU stuff I jumped into was anything before the movies. By the time I considered reading the books for after the movies in the old EU, uh, was pretty close to when Disney like picked it up, and I'm like, well, they're going to make their own new stuff, so I, I don't have a reason to read it. Like, I know about some of it. I don't know the details. I haven't read all the books or any of them, really. So the only thing beforehand would be the Bane trilogy for me. I really like the Bane uh, books. Um, it's hinted in Clone Wars that, like, they... And by the rule of two itself, that, like, Bane is a thing in canon. Right. But how it was told was could obviously be adapted differently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Marcel? Uh, well, uh, that's probably what I would have said as well. Bane. Got him. Um, like, like it, but uh, Bane aside, you know, I, I'm always stuck in the Old Republic because I just love the Old Republic. I like the, uh, the um, just just the, the the grandeur of it and the, the politics behind it and, and the whole... Um, you know the the number of Sith and the number of Jedi are just. Uh, I mean, they're so they're in so such a big abundance that they're they're kind of like foot soldiers at that point. They're not even, you know, like just the masters and right. Yeah, masters. every everybody's got so a many, lightsaber. You know, <laughs> every yeah, everybody's got a lightsaber, and even the people that don't have a lightsaber, they they're still force sensitive. Like there's force sensitives everywhere, um, and just that 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 whole epic is um epoch or whatever however you pronounce it is um is something that that i would love to see um how you know i, and I don't really care how they interpret it because it's 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 legends and eu if they want to i mean it's eu and if they want to convert it into whatever they convert it as long as they, they they take a lot of the main pieces of it or at least the main characters and interpret it in their own way i'm cool with that just i would love to see that where um, it's a bunch of space cowboys and space wizards fighting each other in, in at, a, at, a, at a large epic scale. Um, yeah, I think that'd be cool. Will? Uh, my initial thought was Kyle Kratan, but they kind of already rewrote all that. So I don't know if they could go back and undo Rogue One. So I'm going to actually go with a different video game uh, that I uh, very much enjoyed. And that was Star Wars Unleashed with Starkiller. Mm. Um, and uh, his um, ends up being a mentor figure to him. But General Coda, um, we haven't, uh, what do I to say? Um, even in X-Wing, where they, they took out Juno Eclipse, which was his 
um, his like Imperial pilot. Yeah. Um, so they took her out of the game, which is not a good sign about uh, whether Star Killer is gonna ever um, come back into the canon or not. Um, but I really like that storyline. They're saving them. They're saving them. That's that's what they. <laughs> saving. Okay, fair enough. Um, I mean, I don't know. Uh, but I really like that. I really liked how um, it was someone who was uh, for for a majority of his life, um, except for his like very 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 uh, young memories, uh, was uh, taught and um, from Darth Vader everything about the dark side, everything about Jedi, and like that was this whole world was the you know, the dark side or whatever. Um, and for him to overcome that, to see. Uh, the wrongs in that um, go back to his uh, roots, if you will, um, uh, from uh, General Coda and uh, whatever was instilled from his father on Kashyyyk. I think that's pretty interesting. It's one of, uh, uh, say what you will about Force Unleashed 2. I'm not going to touch on that uh, <laughs> catastrophe. But <laughs> the first one, uh, I thought I had a very good character arc about... Um, like what it what it actually means to be light side and being able to fight fight against the dark on that. So I would definitely like to see that remade. And they could still even uh, the guy who did it uh, is still acting and still doing things. I think he's Sam, actually Sam rumored Whitworth. to be in. Yeah, I think he's rumored to be in uh, the Mandalorian season three or the end of season two, something like that. Maybe I well, saw some connection. He's the voice of Darth Maul. That's one of his Correct. things. He's yeah. also the voice of the em Emperor, uh, cartoon Emperor. Um, yeah, so, so he's still he's still like like doing Star Wars stuff, man. He's like ah, it's so close. Like he's, I'm in my prime. This is the time right now. Yeah, I was like <laughs> I, I can't do this for like a couple of years from now. So I think that would be both uh, cool and plausible. So for myself, um, probably my biggest exposure to the extended universe uh, was one was either the Dash story through Shadows of the Empire that video game and then also um which marcel already mentioned the knights of the old republic series so i really enjoyed those were two of my favorite video games the knights of the old republic one and two um and that covered the darth B darth bane darth malik and uh darth nihilus like those are the three sith that you get to learn about in um in right. there as as well say that again say that it again it was Revan, not Thing. Oh, yeah, Revan. Revan! Sorry, Revan. 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 Malik, Sorry. Nihilus. Yeah. So I, I want to see. I want to see Revan, uh, Malik, and Nihilus. I want. I want to see their stories. Uh, and I think Revan just the 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 whole like you know he was a good guy who was a bad guy and became a good guy and then like he's just he's just this back and forth of I don't know what I want. Uh, I think it'd be pretty pretty cool. Um, that's that's what I would do. All right, from Danta Mentor in uh, in our Discord says, "Who is your favorite Imperial? Pi uh, sorry, Imperial character? There was a there was a and why is it this person? But I'm not going to put that out there because I just we'll just do that. Favorite Imperial character? It, this could be books, EU, whatever. Marcel, we'll have you go first. Uh, it's the um, the unnamed." Thai pilot um, is my favorite character, and uh, it's my favorite Imperial character. And 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 now, and I'm being serious about it. Like the generic unnamed Thai pilots. Now I'm not talking about um, Sane or any you know Hot Run or anybody like that. And the reason is because in the late '90s, I played X-wing versus Tie Fighter, as well as uh, Tie Fighter, and each mission. The missions were so long. I mean, at that time in the 90s, like the technology, like the, the amount of stuff that you can do with X-Wing versus TIE Fighter back then was like, you know, it was out of this world compared to like what you were getting on the Nintendo. And just being included in every battle, even sometimes you're flanking and guarding Darth Vader as a TIE Fighter, I, I that's that's the character that I connected to the most is, is that no name that basically was there to to guard a transport to cover vader or to go somewhere and uh inspect a, a i don't know a, a 
cargo box or something like that. Uh, just something doing completely normal and what would you think boring? It was I don't know that that drew, that drew me in a lot. All right, all right. Will and I still play that. Uh, they got it on Steam. I downloaded it again. I love that game. Um, I think I think I'd steal everybody's pick if I said Darth Vader. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I'm uh, I'm gonna have to actually go with uh, uh, Krennic. Um, Krennic's got a very interesting storyline. I like how he's very emotional not a lot of like imperials get like extremely emotional right they kind of keep the reserve because they're all in military um strictness if you will um but krennic has like outburst uh and like he has like real like true passions and he, he doesn't exactly like follow the imperial um like doctrine um he kind of has his own like little like he he wants to do what um like his own goals right he is, having, he is having to work for the Empire. And I think that's really cool. Like, very very dedicated, very smart uh, guy. Ruthless at times as well. Um, and then just gets, uh, um, uh, I'll say, uh, backhanded. That's not quite the right word. But uh, just gets shut down by Vader as well. I'm just being like, yeah, you think you're cool. But uh, just gets shut down. And he's just, like, completely surprised by it uh, as well. So I'd, I'd definitely take uh, the the ruthless uh, Krennic as well as uh, my second pick, past Vader. Nice. Um, for myself, uh, and Ryan, we're gonna get to you in a second. For myself, um, I really like Tarkin, and I I wasn't a big Tarkin fan originally, but it was the the rogue one and the current canon book and the the catalyst for rogue one that's that was a book called catalyst really sold me on tarkin and just understanding his his upbringing um his 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 train of thought how he would how he literally trained to like hunt people like man dude was amazing like i know i i would take a whole movie on just Tarkin. I think we already mentioned this. I would love it. I, I, I'd be there. First person in line. Uh, sell me my ticket right now. Ryan. Man, it's like every time I went down the list, it was like, Krennic, all right, well, Tarkin? I don't know. Well, <laughs> dang. Uh, I guess I'll have to go with, just because we can talk about everyone different, because, yeah, I, I'm, I'm also a fan of Krennic. I'm also a fan of Tarkin. Uh, we'll get to the the catered version of the question and Thrawn. Uh, I have yet to read the books. I know I should. So good. Uh, oh, both, yeah, they're both so new, good. Both new or old. <laughs> they're so good. Um, but, man, uh, an introduction for him to me in the Rebels TV show is pretty good. Uh, they they it felt like to me the way it was described by everyone who's read the books it did him justice um that uh, he definitely like that that artistic part of his side is really cool as someone who's also studied arts um and using that as a way to learn culture to help derive how he could um enact his strategies in war in the long run of a uh, conflict is really well done um it's something that you don't see in the empire much it's it, i mean he is ruthless but like you can just say a lot of things are ruthless in the empire you know tarkin is ruthless in a, and he's in in his uh actions uh krennic will get anything done is kind of an aspect of being ruthless and uh you know while thrawn is ruthless to get his actions done uh how he gets there is on a different level true that true that yeah um when's my when's my next opportunity to buy you a get when's your birthday so i can send you the thrawn books because they're so good <laughs> oh, uh, february 20th <laughs> there you there you, we, we, we just missed it all right late birthday <laughs> gift man i the, the mind you i haven't read the old thrawn book so maybe there's somebody in the chat who's gonna be mad about that but the, the I, I read the new ones amazing amazing i every time i get to the end of one i, I get sad because i'm like man i want more and then the next one comes out I'm like yes and there's a new new yeah. one around the corner too 
So, don't worry about the old ones. I'm I'm only concerned with the new stuff. Yeah. Okay. Same Not here. That I don't value the old stuff, but like, I don't see the priority of reading that when it's legend now. Yeah, for sure. I, I got books I got to finish. I'm I'm like two thirds through Catalyst. I finished Tarkin a while ago. I got to start the Ahsoka book. I heard that one's really good, and I think there's one more I have too. I uh, think it's uh, Dark Disciple, which is like Asajj Ventress and oh yeah, that's God, that's what's, another what's good that one. Jedi Quinlan Vos. Yes, super good, super good. Yes, agreed. Two thumbs, way up, way up. All right, let's see who our next question is from. All right, this is from Chacho, and he asks, "What pilot or crew from the Star Wars universe that's canon do you want to see in X-wing?" And what ability do you think it could have? What would be a theme? I, I got one. All right, Will, Will's ready. ready He's on go. the ready. Go. I read, I read the question. I, I got it ready. I want, uh, I'm going to pronounce his name wrong, but uh, Sicarius Crumb. Sicarius Crumb? What's his name? What's the salacious. Name? Salacious Crumb. Sal salacious Crumb? Uh, it's Java's little uh, pet, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, maybe, I don't know what the relationship exactly is, but... Um, uh, he's he hangs out with Java. He just laughs man maniacally. Um, and for his ability, it's uh, whenever someone, uh, re whenever you're uh, attacking or defending, because uh, he's a crew member, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, if the attacker or defender um, that's not you, however you want to word that, um, uh, rerolls a dice. If they reroll a blank, uh, they get a stress token. Like reroll into a blank, uh, so then he just cackles at them uh, maniacally uh, as they failed at the reroll. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. All right, Ryan. Um, actually, not not meant to happen this way, but it popped in my head. Thrawn crew. All right. And I'm trying. I was trying to think of like he's a very predictive person, and how is that rewarding without having like dial looking is like a spy thing to me it's not like a predictive general so what if it had something to do with at the uh at the start of this be it during the system phase let's just say during system phase you may name an action if you're if any of your opponent when any of your opponent's ships perform that action you get a reward for it. whether it's you do the same action you may uh change uh, turn change the dial of one of your ships within certain range i don't know just like you saying an action and if your opponent does that action in that round each time or maybe it's charge based right like right. one two or three charges you can then reap some type of benefit from that i like that i like that a lot Marcel, I'm still gonna go back to Yoda. Uh, we're we're way too late on having Yoda around. And um, as a pilot, I would probably would, would like to see his ability again. Going back to the whole um, general of um, you know like battle meditation and and uh, augmenting like the general troops morale and ability is something that um, well probably like an ability that you know how Leia can make all the red turns white in this case you know maybe uh, yoda can like give everyone a calculate every couple turns like every three turns or something like that uh you trigger and you know you trigger his charges and then he can everybody gets a calculate during the system phase or something like that uh something global something big and that would be both uh crew and as as a pilot as well Cool. Uh, so one for me that I'm also confused why we haven't seen it yet, uh, because we have Baze Malbus, who you see over my shoulder here. Why don't we have Chirrut in the game as a crew card? Um, you know, li light force user. Uh, maybe it's not even necessarily force, but it's like a charge, like a single charge that basically functions as a force. But... Uh, you know, just just like you can spend the focus to like maybe you do it's one or the other like just evading doesn't let you do hits but it lets you convert one focus to uh, to an evade something like that. Um, 
that's that's what uh that's what i that's what i think uh, yeah, maybe maybe something that like it's a forced force charge use like if it's kind of like greedo where if you're shot at you it can be it like you have to use it defensively you have no choice if you if you can use it defensively you have to use it defensively and then when you do shoot at someone it's the same thing you'd have to use it either way okay That's the first opportunity so it's like it's his reactions from him using the force only without any eyesight mm. so like his first instinct is to just do it based on the force right i like that i like it but eventually so he I, gets shot down <laughs> spoilers so i got a i got a weird tangent because they're uh Dude, hit this it. reminded me of of this uh so i always thought uh the jar jar binks crew uh would just make you set your dial face up <laughs> right okay uh, <laughs> uh how much would you guys not pay oh, that's a weird way to put that because i assume it would be negative right like that's his only ability is like he just sets you you have to set your dial face up well how many points did you get back get back for doing that yeah, how was his negative point cost? You only have to set it face up, right? You don't have to like show them as you're turning the dial, right? What's uh, what's 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 the cheapest I one crew carrier that's worthwhile right now? <laughs> that's what I would look at immediately. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, because you just say uh, plane and face is set, and then you put down your dial face up, like you can hold it in your hands, like Dion does. Hold hold it in your hands until they say set, and then you can put it down <laughs> face up. Uh, so I won crew carriers. I don't know freighter captains. I guess. Yeah. Well, it's Jar Jar, right? So theoretically, Republic only. Uh, yeah. So arcs. The L A A T S. Those are I two. Yeah. So there's yeah there's a balance there for other I ones to block. So what if? Okay. So may maybe you. Uh, well, I guess I would change it to probably at the start of the activation phase. Say your dial face up. Or wait, start of the planning phase. What if they? What if they could plan around seeing your dial? Okay. So like it almost needs to be the first dial down kind of thing. Yeah, at the start of the planning phase, set your dial face up. Okay. Or you know you know you could probably get the same effect by doing something along the lines of um like so jar jar makes you set the dial face up and but the effect is uh during the system phase your opponent may alter one of their dials you get the same same idea mm. maybe a little less powerful uh but still like bad for you there's got to be that one potential catastrophe that works out for Jar Jar. So, like, right. if an enemy ship would bump into you, even though they knew the dial the entire time, they'd take a crit. Yeah, if they are blocked by a guy who they could see their dial from. That's, that's hilarious. Yeah, they would just they'd just take a crit instead of a regular, like... Well, see, at that point, at that point, it would be worth zero points, though. And we probably shouldn't have negative upgrades. Yeah, we probably... So then, yeah, like, if, if you find... It, just put them in a big base ship and say, all right, I don't care if you know where I'm going. <laughs> if you bump into me, it's bad bad news. That's awesome. All right. Uh, next question that we're going to touch here... Um, <laughs> So this is from Poke, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I don't exactly agree. But well, let me just read it. Okay, cool. So the the this what's stated here says I like Star Wars movies uh, to enjoy them, but these the recent three uh, weren't bad. But I also play X Wing and love the universe. Period. I think should we just ignore the hyperspace travel? I think they're talking about the hyperspace like through through uh through the first order fleet uh and space combat in this most recent in the most recent movie so the like ignoring all space combat in the most recent movies doesn't make any sense to me because we had some pretty awesome space combat and also in in planet uh, well, what's what was that? in atmosphere uh combat i think let's go ahead and 
kind of condense this question into the hyperspace through things. I don't think we'll probably ever get any any function in the game that says like you know kamikaze your ship into another I think, one. I think also when they're talking about the most recent one, I think it's the that that scene where they're like hyperspace shoot 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 hyperspace shoot 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 hyperspace shoot 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 like. They're hyperspace skipping, I think is what they call yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. They're skipping and fighting, skipping and fighting, where before it was like plot your course, find out where you're going, go in, and, and you can't follow, you can't track from hyperspace to hyperspace. Except they did. And, and the, huh? I guess you're saying before. Before, yes. Yeah, before. But now it's like you you make a jump, and they were in the middle of a, of a battle, and then without plotting anything, they make another jump and make another. So they they were basically skipping through hyperspace without setting any yeah any courses so they were just like jumping and they were jumping even to the point where they jumped inside a planet and then jumped out of it like out of the yeah they they went through the ice wall it was a thin ice wall that's why that's why poe asked chewy you think how do you, how thick do you think that wall is <laughs> <laughs> i mean sure we ignore we ign- not necessarily ignore the hyperspace but the game I don't know how that would translate to the game, so I guess in the game design we ignore it. I mean, I don't, I don't know, because it's a right. The idea with the game is that you're in a, what they call like a contested sector, right? This is a three by three area, a sector in which you are fighting. If you flee, if you run away, you've lost the game. So I guess it doesn't ap- apply. I mean, any I don't know any opposition there. I that's. Um, I think we could uh, have some fun with it, uh, like um, some sort of game mode to where like every three rounds, all of the obstacles change places, as if like you're skipping through uh, to a different contested sector. All right, all right. Ryan, any thoughts on that before we move on to our next question? Nothing much, really. I mean, if we wanted to do some like Will mentioned, implement it in a fun way, uh, have multiple tables of aces high going, <laughs> and then like two of the players from each table have to like this. You know, f- there'd be some mechanic that would decide one of you go left, one of you go right, and you just move down the table, and they hyperspace the other ones, and just it would just be a mess of chaos probably to try and organize. But someone will figure it out. I could do that. <laughs> maybe i will good luck yeah i know <laughs> all righty so next question we're going to take here comes from jukebox hero and he says what happens to ahsoka you see her in rebels but never hear anything about her so if we're talking about post post rebels um we don't know yet i'm assuming that's one of the open-ended stories right um so let's go ahead and we'll we'll transform this question and give your like what do you think that storyline might be you know at, at the very end of rebels by the way spoilers if you care the like the last scene that's what i was gonna ask should i be like telling uh, myself because because i'm on season one of rebels you're on season w- oh my god Oh season yeah, you gotta you gotta take your headphones off for yeah, a second. Yeah, yeah, you you wanted to. <laughs> I'm gonna just, be looking the, at you. Give me the thumbs up when it's when it's okay. Come back. Okay. So, so <laughs> I get. Wait, Do we wait, also want to discuss like the reports of um, said character showing up somewhere else in a different series? Yeah, we we yeah, can we, we can bring that up. Yeah, we might uh, we might actually have our uh, questions answered in uh, the Mandalorian or even a spinoff show of her own. Yeah, like uh, I, I, it's not completely confirmed that she's in the Mandalorian, but it seems like there's all the Rosario Dawson talk, right? Like people that was all um, over the um, place. Yeah, it's like as confirmed as you can be without being a spoiler. Right. It's like this might be happening. <laughs> yeah, it's well, I mean like it's it's as confirmed as like the Obi-Wan show, right? Like right. We, it was it was there, but then it wasn't there, but now it is there. Was that a thumbs up? No. 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 Not a thumbs up. No. Go away. <laughs> Go away. Um, so, so so yeah so, so wait, are we doing just our wild guesses yeah here's our uh, wild guess so here let's set the setting so again for those okay. of you who want to know and again if you don't want to be spoiled by the end of rebels here's your chance we'll we'll I don't, 
just wait like 30 seconds. At the very end, you see uh, Sabine and Ahsoka, uh, and basically Ezra's missing, right, because of the last scene with the, the, the space whales that take him away, the hyperspace him away with Thrawn, which I think is awesome, actually. Um... We we see Ahsoka and and with her with her white hood and uh, which very reminiscent of that of the last episode of of, of uh, Clone Wars pretty cool but anyway she's there uh, with Sabine and they're just kind of looking out into the open and that's the end so where where do we think goes from there uh, I would like a uh, like a road trip adventure um, uh, Sabine where, Ahsoka adventure. Uh, <laughs> Exactly, where they take that big old tall ship, whatever that was, yep. uh, and they fly it to the uh, to the unknown regions. Um, but the whole time, uh, we seen we seen Sabine fight with the dark saber, right? She's a, uh, obviously a, a proud Mandalorian warrior. I would love to see uh, like her get her own lightsaber and be like actually trained in the Force. Whether she's force sensitive or not, um, she can swing a she can swing a dark saber. So I think she can swing a lightsaber pretty good. Um, and I would just want to see like in uh, uh, just like lightsaber fights or not really lightsaber fights, but um, just like these cool choreographed fights with Ahsoka with her double backed uh, things, and then uh, Sabine fighting with her own uh, lightsaber. Maybe maybe Ahsoka has to give her one of her two at some point in time, and Ahsoka True. could defend herself with it. Uh, I would just like to see some um, kind of like mentor and apprentice uh, relationship develop with Sabim and Ahsoka. Um, it's just uh, two uh, very cool um, like female warriors out there just taking on the unknown regions. All right. All right. He, he, here's here's another idea here. Another idea. So what if in, in their adventures, one of the places they come across is our in-world our Mandalorian? world okay we know that oh man i'm forgetting his name uh the the guy from breaking bad the big big bad general he's so good at being bad guy oh uh uh Gestapo moff, or moff his gideon is. is it moff gideon, gideon yeah. yes moff gideon I was his breaking bad name right <laughs> gus um so they come across and Sabine, we get a live action Sabine and Ahsoka, all right, because they're on their Sabine Ahsoka adventure, and Sabine gets the dark saber back and then fulfills what you're talking about, Will. Then she can have her lightsaber in the Sabine Ahsoka spin off series that we get. Um That's what I want. I think I think Gideon has the dark saber after they leave though. I think he would get it from her. I think what if he showed up and beat them down <laughs> and took the no. Darksaber from them? Uh, if you recall in Rebels, uh, Sabine gave the Darksaber to Bo-Katan. Mm, yeah, that's right. That's right. So, and then the Purge of Mandalore apparently was a thing led by Moff Gideon. Then he has it. And then the Dion's thing could happen. Bam. Are, are we ready to bring Marcel back <laughs> Right, Marcel, come back. Come back. <laughs> you'll have you'll have no idea it was the porpoises the whole time. <laughs> well, hello there. Hello. Okay, Marcel, so that you can kind of participate in the question. You know who Ahsoka is, right? Yeah, she's the Padawan. Okay. What are some things that you think could be cool to happen to her in her adventure if we ever see her again, from what you know? That's that's our, that's the question for you. That's your version of the question. From what I know, what would be cool to happen to Ahsoka? Well, yeah. I know she meets the Rebels. I mean, the, the Rebels, because obviously that's uh, like like a big deal. Like You know what, what was surprising? She, she, it must have been like some really big stuff that happened with her, because when uh, I, I forgot who it was, somebody posted like, you got 15 points, pick your favorite something on Facebook, and everybody was doing that. Yeah. Everybody picked Ahsoka, like, like man, whatever it was, she must have, she must have, she must have hit a nerve with people. Uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of people loving some Ahsoka. So, well, I think what would happen is, um, you know, something cool that would happen is that she, like, becomes a master, and then 
she's walking across the street to like find the Padawan to pass on all this knowledge <laughs> across the street, truck. and then yeah, and um, yeah, she gets hit by a truck, and then <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> all right, the Padawan will be great though. Somebody else will take over. All righty. <laughs> What Marcel? What is your earliest memory of Star Wars, or regarding Star Wars? Uh, good lord. Um, I know I, I don't think I saw it in Spanish. So, uh, I don't remember. I don't remember. I mean, I know I saw the movies in the eighties. So I saw the movies in the eighties. And it was like blah, and I know I liked it, but it was like no big deal. I think my first memory of the is a Nintendo video game, Star Wars Nintendo video game, and it was like a side scroller where you're literally um, just running sideways. It's kind of like um, if you guys ever played like Ghouls and Goblins and stuff like that. It's just like a very or Russian Attack, like one of those Nintendo. You know the first Nintendo generic side scrollers, and you're just running, and then pew pew, and then you jump, and then when you get the lightsaber, you just you just hear like a zoo zoo zoo, and like that's like literally my first memory of of Star Wars is just those video games. I don't think I really watched and appreciated the movies till uh, after I played Tie Fighter versus uh, you know that X Wing game. Mm-hmm. And when I played the X-Wing game, I started playing it. And I'm like, man, this is kind of cool. And then I started watching the movies. And then I saw those movies. And then I saw the prequels after that. And then I forgot about it for about, you know, six, seven, ten years or however long it was until I found X-Wing again. Cool. So games have brought me into the, you know, it's either been a video game or a, uh, so, yeah, that's my first memory. Like, I, I, I honestly, the, the, the main movies didn't have an impact on me until I had something to relate it to, which was video games for me at the time. Cool. Ryan? Uh, I don't remember if it was my birthday or for Christmas, but I do remember opening up the box that my parents got me that was the original trilogy VHS set. Um, and that was... This the version that came with the like uh short interview before the movie like fully started between uh I think George Lucas and whoever was the interview interviewee. Uh it didn't have any of the uh special editions that Lucas made eventually. So I think it was like just before he got into that, but not the original original. Mm-hmm. Just the and the, yeah, it's I don't even remember which one I technically watched first. I just know that, like, I remember the box and then the movies were in there, and then it spiraled out of that. Was it the black box? I I don't know. I I remember vis- visibly the VHS is, but not like the box that held them all in there. Just the the individual like you know cardboard slide VHS. Pop it in. Enjoy. Cool. All right. Will, what about yours? Uh, it was 1997 and, uh, I'm a, I'm a young boy, uh, and my family goes to see the re-releases. That was 97, right? I'm pretty sure when they did the theatrical re-releases. No? Crickets? No idea. No, am I, am I talking crazy? Did they not (laughs) re-release Star Wars? Uh, Because I swear I saw it in the theaters. Um, Crazy Vulcan says 97. People are agreeing with you. Yes, yes, yes. In the chat. Okay. All right. Perfect. I'm not crazy. Uh, (laughs) uh, So, yeah, it was like a family adventure. And, like, uh, my my older siblings, they didn't care. Uh, (laughs) um, But, like, some, some, like, uh, got a hold of me on that. I was uh, just uh, fascinated by sci-fi at the time. So that... Uh, like blew my mind. Uh, of course, I didn't know it was like an old movie. I thought we were gonna go like I thought we were seeing like a new movie uh, at the time, right? Because I'm just a little kid. Um, but yeah, we, I just remember seeing like uh, those movies. Um, well, the whole family didn't go to see the other two. I forget if they. Re- I thought they re-released all of them, but um, yeah, just seeing those in the uh, theater 
and then I just went Star Wars crazy, and then like I think within that same month, I just started playing uh, Shadow of the Empire, and was just like hooked on Star Wars after that, and we just got uh, so so excited uh, that they were making more Star Wars movies, and I had to wait years uh, for the prequels. Wait, hold them up again. He'll, yeah, those do look familiar. Yeah, I, that, that's that's it. Yep, that's the one. Sorry, I, I realized I'm, I'm, I'm muted. Right? Yeah. So yeah, this those. this set of VHS was the was my first. I got them for my. Uh, sorry, I was muted there. My eighth birthday, and I vividly remember um, going to Kmart, and I can I can see the front, and uh, because somebody at school had mentioned Star Wars. Um, and I just, I asked my parents, I was like, I want Star Wars for my birthday. And I remember carrying, carrying the box outside of Kmart. And uh, I have, this is probably, it sounds really silly, but like, this was a really good childhood memory I have. And uh, it's one of those like things that even like throughout college, I've lost a bunch, so many things from my childhood, but this is something that I've always taken care of. Um, and and have watched them many 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 times so yeah this my earliest childhood uh childhood star wars memory uh right there one one of my one of my prized possessions uh so yeah it was before it was a couple years before the re-releases i think the re-releases came out in 97 if i'm not mistaken but yeah that's that's mine so uh what's your favorite star wars book if you've read one man that's a hard that's hard for me i don't i don't know do, do you, any of you guys have one that's just like bam favorite star wars book is this uh, one uh, the... probably bane path of destruction or something like that okay so that's an eu book yeah nice uh, i think mine was one of the first ones i read uh which was uh the glove of darth vader Oh. I had uh, tri Trioculus and a bunch of ridiculous characters in it, uh, but it was very interesting. Very interesting. One of the first like uh, um, post tri uh, OG trilogy um, content that I had ingested. Ryan, uh, slightly deep in thought, but the one that keeps popping in my head as I start thinking of others is Revan. Uh, they came out with a book dedicated to explaining more of what happens between uh, KOTOR 2 and when they came out with the uh, Knights of the Republic MMO, or the Old Republic MMO, or whatever. Uh, a lot of good stuff in there for any of you Knights of the Republic fans. Good Revan perspective. I think I started listening to that one on audio, on Audible. And is it the one where it starts where he's married and kind of off to the side? I mean, it starts off in that. I think that's similar to where he starts. I don't know if you had a Okay, I just remember I started listening to it, and then I don't know why um, I stopped. I just remember I, I was reading or listening, not reading, something about... Um, about Revan and he was married and he was like in some city looking out the window and kind of he got that like retired uh bored at home quarantine feel <laughs> probably less of the quarantine but yeah <clears throat> all right well for me um like i said i've i've read all of the uh of the current canon books um i really like the phasma book it's really good um which i know seems strange and she 
is not a great character in the movies. But the Phasma books make you really sad about Phasma in the in the movies because you're like, wait, but I thought she was this just words I can't say on our show, but just really cool, just super strong female character. Man, trust me, if you just want to see just like just the the true ruthlessness of Phasma, read the Phasma books. Absolutely worth it. It is amazing. Would uh, you say if you were to pronounce the acronym for it, she'd be a BAMF? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, a close second, a close second would be the Thrawn books. The, they're, they're, they're just, they're great. Uh, it is, it was a character that I always knew, knew about, but then getting just into the lore, um, again, just every time I just want, I just want more. Alrighty. Next question here is, are there any characters from, sorry, any pilots or crew cards uh, from Star Wars that you love but are terrible in X-Wing? And it was just like, oh man, I wish this was better because I like them. Mm. Um, I'm going to have to go with Bosk. I tried so hard to get Bosk on the table. And it uh, just has been failing me. I have been trying with uh, with Greedo Crew and Torco Mux, which I think is a funny combo. Make, uh, make who's ever shooting at Bosk Initiative Zero so that they won't trigger the Greedo Crew. Um, but I've been struggling to get that ship to actually be viable. Mm -hmm. I think the problem is he doesn't double mod offense. Got to work on that. All righty. Uh, it's more of a fun one here. Do we think Chewbacca ate porgs on the Falcon? Oh, like uh, ate the ones that were infesting the Falcon? Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. <laughs> Easy. He's hungry. He's a big guy. He got, got a lot of calories to fill that body. You, you do. You do. Marcel, what do you think? Um, I think you asked the source. Well, did you? William. What, what did I ask? What? I said ask you're, the source. You're, you're, you're the source of the wiki knowledge. Yeah. Did oh, you, did yeah, he did in secret. He, he did it in secret. He was, a, he was embarrassed to do it in front of his friends he was making. Uh, but he definitely, he definitely ate those Porg's parents and then grabbed <laughs> up all the orphans and brought them along. <laughs> Come on, guy. <laughs> That's so sad. <laughs> just like laying out like tiny path of like things for the porks to follow ooh piece of candy ooh piece of candy ooh piece of candy and then Chewbacca just <laughs> like, grabs ooh, like ooh you a piece nah. of candy so <laughs> canonically the answer is no though alright because there is a book that I read to my daughter probably at least once a week called Chewie and the Porks that tells you that Chewie loved the porks okay loved the porks like eventually he grows to love them alright so but the, here's the question: Did he eat the one that he already cooked? I think that, like, do do you waste the sacrifice of this pork? Yeah, it seems pretty. It seems pretty redundant to go. He plucked all the feathers off of it, got it, re got it ready. That had to have taken some time. Cooked it, slow cooked it, rotisserie style. That's got to take at least twenty minutes, right? Uh, and it was only after all of that work. Uh, that he finally didn't want to do it. I, I, I think he saved that one for later, for sure. <laughs> nice. That, that pork died of natural causes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he found it. He I didn't. It. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 it was like this when I got here. <laughs> that, pork, that pork just defeathered itself and jumped on the rotisserie. I don't know what to tell you. Nice. Who do we think is the most overrated characters? A character in Star Wars, and why? Canonically, Ooh. that gotta exist. Ooh, can I jump? I'll, I'll jump on this bullet right. so no one else has Do to. <gasps> uh, it's Boba Fett. Overrated. Uh, though to be fair, he's the only person who was successful in Empire Strikes Back. Everybody else failed. 
uh, doing anything. Um, but he did get his bounty. I'll give him that. Of course, he had to invoke help from a Dark Lord of the Sith. But, you know, who's who's really counting on that one? That's being resourceful. That's what that's called. I mean, I think Vader hired him. And then <laughs> Vader ended up doing his job anyways. So, <laughs> Like, listen, stand really... here. Stand here. Do the hand thing. And we got him. Yeah. He's like, don't worry, Boba. I'm going to invite them to a beautiful uh, dinner. We're going to sit down. We're going to talk for a little bit. Now we're going to have you walk in with your spurs and uh, we'll, we'll get him. We'll get the gotcha. We'll throw down the punk sign behind us. Uh, all the things. Or he, he, get, he was, it was, he's like a consultant. All right. Like a planned consultant. I, I don't really, uh, I don't know. I'm unimpressed. And, and honestly, like I said, I'm jumping on the bullet. Everyone can feel free to disagree. But honestly, the fact that the I think the prequels even ruined him further. Like, now he's a clone. He's not even an OG. He's not even a real person. He's just some knockoff Django flying around, flying Django ship, wearing Django's armor. Remind like, me after the show to say the thing I want to say right now that I can't say. Okay, <laughs> like I have, I have a no. Um, it's 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 like a, a, a zinger that would go amazing here, and I just can't. I just can't right now. Okay. All Fair right. <laughs> All righty. Uh, Will, what do you think? Well, it's gonna be Boba Fett. All right. Sorry. Uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I read my list again. Uh, Ryan. Man, I even shaved the beard. There's I a know. natural like size difference on the beard now. It's summertime, man. Um, overrated, man. I like a lot of characters. Um, I'm gonna go Darth Maul. Um, I think a lot of, like oh, I his story that he's that they've built for him in Clone Wars and and in in other TV series for spoiler reasons. Um has been pretty good like it's it's cool he's done a lot more things um but i believe was the question specific to movies um no just canonical all right well either way canonically like i think a lot of people raise him up to a higher level because visuals the look the fight in episode one amazing cool but if you look on the power scale and everything else that happened, the rest of all Star Wars, he's kind of low on the totem pole. Like, kind of, everyone puts him up to being this, like, very powerful and stuff. But, like, he lost to, like, Apprentice Obi-Wan. And then continued to lose, sometimes got a little bit of an edge, and lose some more. Like, he wasn't succeeding, like, most of the other Sith. So, I'm he throwing that one out there. Tried so hard. Kind of half baked. All right, Marcel. This is gonna be um, just like Will. It'll be a probably unpopular choice. So, you know, you've got like two ends of the spectrum, right? And these two ends of the spectrum, I would say, Luke Skywalker and Ray, where Luke Skywalker. Um, gets the most accolades and the most love from the fan base. But if you're looking at the movies, not for, you know, not not, not EU because EU is different. But if you're looking at the movies uh, in general canon, uh, like he he was he was a prima donna. Like he was like, I don't want to do this, and you know, he was just a baby most of the time. He failed at almost everything he did, and even to beat the emperor and vader he didn't really beat vader i mean he got the one up on him a little bit but he didn't truly beat him and he didn't beat the emperor either vader turned on him and and, and did that so uh he didn't do that much and ray on the op on, on the other hand was just like you know mary sue like you know she was like you know she, she was as good as it comes and she's she's the second coming of the force incarnate reincarnate uh, but then the way people love each character, people love Luke because of the struggle, and people hate Ray because of the Mary Sooness of it. Um, but as far as just like plain overrated based on achievement, I would have to say Luke is overrated based on achievement because 
uh, his whole arc from episode four through six and seven through nine was struggle and failure. Cool, cool. And you know, I, I will, I will give a little bit of so. When I started jumping deeper into Star Wars, a lot of the of the like luke skywalker love that i i i saw was mostly um was mostly like people talking about eu stuff like oh you know but he was like super powerful and he did all this but like me again that the eu was something that i never dived into like it, it never happened to me so i hear these things like i i still really like luke as a character uh and i think maybe it's because of what you said it's that like failure and eventually six being part of the success right and seeing the struggle there well that's interesting interesting i like that that's it's good sorry you jump on a bullet and that's all right that's what today's about it's about opinions all right <laughs> so uh for me i'm gonna go ahead and say that i think one of the most overrated people is probably yoda just just like yeah yoda um i like him i'm not saying he's bad but i think one of the he was supposed to be the most powerful on the jedi council right like the the guy and how could he not figure out the whole palpatine thing in time like it was under his nose the whole time the whole time and it's like he's a like we see him do this like this amazing lightsaber battle so much wisdom and like i the re, the return of the jedi and uh an empire strikes back yoda is a better yoda than the republic yoda because while he was younger and probably was more, uh, maybe had more strength, but more, more uh, you know, more power there, the his pride and what the other things that just clouded the dark side with the dark side, just like how could how, I think he is one of the big like canonical failures of of Star Wars. Like man, Yoda's awesome, but oof, you you, you missed the mark, man. You missed it. He he made his greatest achievements after death. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. All righty. Now, opposite end of the spectrum. Underrated. Underrated. Most underrated Star Wars character. Somebody who just is like, man, they deserve more credit. The autopilot drone. Definitely. Duh. Chirp. I I hear crickets. You know, chirp, you, chirp. you guys don't have any, any anybody to just to to throw in no, there. That's, that, that's just that's response to Marcel's thing. Oh, yeah, that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Underrated. Ryan, you're on the um, you're on the screen. Do it. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm doing it. Underrated. I will say. Even though he's part of the main cast, <clears throat> I don't think uh, he gets a lot of credit, uh, mainly because a lot of people have to translate for him. Uh, Chewbacca. Um, I mean, one of the things that like I look at uh, like after Force Awakens came out, one of the common cartoon things that came out were like Chewbacca watching ben grow up and uh you know and you see these panels of him doing things as a kid learn to become a jedi a little bit and then uh then comes to like the next and like he you know ben's not there anymore turns into kylo ren and then chewbacca is like in that scene for uh han and kylo when kylo kills han and i mean you never talk about Chewbacca's emotions at all during that. Like that, that dude's got to feel stuff too, right? Like we've seen emotional outbursts from Chewie, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, he's always been like the co-pilot to Han. Obviously, he's been there for every one of the main characters most of the time. And man, if it my episode my episode nine gripes, meh, um, they could have done Chewie a little more 
justice both by either actually having the consequence really happen or um do it do that swerve a little more correctly i think it would have uh put a little more importance to Chewie a bit in that final movie uh but yeah no i I think i think lando or not sorry someone just said that in the chat i think Chewie uh is definitely more on the underrated side i know a lot of people just love him like as a character but Mm -hmm. they don't love him as a hero and the the the, what he brings to the actual um rebel alliance so to say right yeah i think it could have been really cool to see like a direct confrontation between him and chewbacca in nine but I yeah, think I Kylo think I think the reason I'm thinking just like the the business reason you don't do that is like Chewbacca's like powerful but also cute and cuddly. So like from the marketing standpoint, you don't want the the vision of kids to be like Chewbacca like choke holding Kylo Ren. <laughs> you know, something like that. Yeah, Ooh. Lou mentioned in the chat like Chewbacca never got a hug after Han died after episode <laughs> seven. Like his best friend. Nobody cares for Chewie. Chewie has to care for others. It happened in the book, if that makes anybody feel better. Okay. It did. <laughs> they, they got to hug Ray and Chewbacca. <laughs> there's definitely, when you read the books for the for the movies, there's definitely the authors going like, and we're going to add this in because we totally missed something here. It's, it's pretty great. Um, Will, underrated Star Wars characters. Um, it's this is a hard choice for me, but I think I'm gonna go with General Hux. Okay, not a lot of people give that guy credit. I mean, he was like the number three in the first order. Uh, was not force sensitive. Um, was a ginger of all people, right? So it's really showing because <laughs> really those the first people <laughs> really show the first order's uh, inclusivity uh, by bringing a uh, ginger into um, the the supreme ranks. There, uh, I thought he was respected from um, all of the other first order people. Everybody except for like Kylo Ren and Snow, who uh, were really talking. Um, well, some some serious beef behind his back, but uh, beyond that, like it seemed like Phasma, um, most of the other, uh, like I said, like higher ups in the first order gave him some respect. Obviously, he got to that um, position um, of authority um, by being, you know, like uh, like having like good work ethic, things like that. Granted work might not be the best but um i mean he I in, his, he in his field in his field yeah i mean he oversaw like star killer base which is like a huge uh, get the pun there uh, uh. a huge over t- a huge undertaking um to, to create such a massive weapon such a massive star system or excuse me space station is what i meant um and so i'm granted like i feel like Snoke just like undercuts him in Last Jedi, and he get, gets a bad rep, um, in uh, or bad rep from the other First Order people in Rise of Skywalker. Uh, but uh, like I said, he he got to that position of power, and at the, at the very end, he's still just trying to backstab uh, Kylo Ren. Um, and one of one of my favorite. Uh, scenes is uh, in uh, Last Jedi of him, uh, where he, he's just about to go off, uh, or he, he's starting to go off on Kylo Ren. He's like, "What makes you think that you're gonna be the supreme?" Oh, oh, oh. And just <laughs> like, uh, I, and I, I, I love that where he's like, like that's this is like his one opportunity, and I always thought like he was, uh, yeah, had Kylo not woken up there, I think he would have killed Kylo Ren in that moment and taking that supreme chancellor position as well so um definitely for for underrated at least uh general hux all right marcel all right so i got two i got um rebel and empire case so on the rebel case i think it's mon mothma i think mon mothma doesn't get the the love she deserves because when people talk about like building up the the rebellion and doing like just building it all up it's always brought up as like the organas you know the organas right. are the ones that that really drove this but it was really mon mothma behind the scenes like 
she was the architect of the entire rebellion, even more so than Akbar. Uh, uh, you know, Admiral Akbar was like the admiral. He was like the the war guy. Strategist. Oh, huh? He was the war guy. He, yeah, he, he was the war guy. But the poli- the politics behind the scenes and the putting together the the start of the entire rebel the rebellion and bringing it all together more so than Organa was uh, Mon Mothma. So I think she doesn't get enough enough love for it and. Um, so that's on the rebel side. On the Empire side, I think it's probably Krennic. Because in the movie, Krennic, he was portrayed as kind of a weakling, as a, uh opportunist, as a weakling, as somebody who couldn't keep his stuff together. But really, I mean, Krennic was the architect of the Death Star. I mean, he's the one that he was ruthless and he, he was ambitious. And, yeah, he was conniving and he had all these terrible qualities that you would want in a leader but those terrible qualities that you want in a leader is what kind of drove him to to do that and Tarkin was better than him Tarkin was like I mean in, in every way you look at it Tarkin was just a step ahead of him in, in every way you look at it but if it wasn't for Tarkin like Krennic could have been could have been it uh, but Tarkin was like nope like I I I, I planted my flag first and this is my this is my empire uh and i'm gonna claim it so i think uh krennic and mon mothma are people who are who had the biggest impact in the star wars universe but yet are portrayed as either a uh, a throwaway or a like nobody you know like scaredy cat conniving little you know begging for scraps Man, Krennic was mine. <laughs> I was gonna. <laughs> I the, oh, he said two. I'm like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. And he did it. Uh, I'm trying to scramble in my mind for somebody. You know what? I'm gonna say. Um, I know that the um, that the sequel trilogy is a, is a hot button topic, um, but I I think that some of the people who are like dismissive of it, um, I think underrate. Kylo Ren and Ben Solo, his story, um, because like if you if you take just think about like where he comes from, right? His his bloodline, uh, how he learned, and while I know a lot of people are like, oh, he he became like it's weird, or I don't like that Luke, um, you know, was basically like the re- one of the reasons why he goes to the dark side. I think he is a great like. Um, kind of like uh, representation. Okay, representation for he's going fishing. What? What? He's saying you're fishing. No, I no, I'm Krennic, and you're fishing. <laughs> no, no. Let me let me finish. He's a great representation of of real life. It's the you know. Uh, you had the Palpatine right in the back of his head. Now that we know, right in the back of his head, just kind of manipulating him. You have this internal struggle, and kind of looking at at what his family had done, and trying to find his place in it, and how it turns him into what is Kylo Ren, but then ends up, you know, being able to redeem himself essentially. Um, not a huge fan of the fact that he doesn't have to pay consequences necessarily. I mean, he dies, but I would have liked to see him pay some consequences just like story-wise. But I think um, people who call him just like a whiny baby um, should like look in the mirror because we, we all can be whiny babies sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. Uh, somebody says, I love Paige. Actually, Paige is actually a pretty cool character in the book. Uh, let's go ahead and hit one more, one more, and uh, let's see if we find a good one here. All right, we'll bring it. We'll bring it back around to X-wing. Noting the lack of Initiative Six aces in the Rebellion, what character from Star Wars? This specifically says Legends, but maybe just we'll say it's Star Wars. Would you like to see fill the void? At initiative six. Is there anybody who comes to mind and says this person would be really cool initiative six ace because of lore? Do we want to um, stick to only rebellion or we want to open it up to all factions? Um this question specifically asks about the rebellion. 
if there's something else that just like why is this person not a six go ahead throw it in yeah i'm just i'm just confused because they have three initiative six aces well i wouldn't call finn row an ace but um anyways so I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in. I'm I'm not gonna yeah, get my answer stolen. First. All right, Hera in an X-wing, initiative six. Gotta make it happen. All right, Hera in an X-wing, initiative six. Make it happen. Though, Marcel, slight spoilers, spoilers. Okay, um, she does get like to. to I I mean maybe that was a, that was a battle strategy. This guy, this guy right there. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. Um, yeah, Hera Don't in an X Wing. Initiative six with that same ability, though. Oh no, 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 no! We, we got to change that scary ability. Scary times. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. Anybody else? Jump in. Uh, I'm gonna go with Admiral Akbar. Uh, we know. Uh, he's uh, <laughs> he's he's got he's very old he's been fighting wars forever right ever since the rebellion or uh, the the clone wars um we never see him fight uh, a small fighter but a base guy a lot of experience in it he's got those big eyes too man you can see, <laughs> i can see, see you behind me <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> He's voiced by Sean Connery. I'm as sorry, well, that but... was really bad. <laughs> does not I was all, hoping but... we would just, just... go fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, got trapped. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Marcel or Ryan, anything? Oh, I was halfway listening, halfway not because of. You gave me the the spoiler alert. Yeah. Uh, Rebels Initiative Six. Other than Yoda, um, I can't really think of anybody that in the, on the Rebel side that would that would that would reach that level um, of ACness. <laughs> if if anything, it would probably be based off um, lore, like outside of outside of the movies. Mm -hmm. That's just fine. So. Yeah, but I don't. I don't. I haven't read like the current ones. I just read most the Old Republic and like stuff that happened before. So I have no idea. Just uh, you know what? To make up for the lack of Initiative Six Rebels, make Wedge even better. Give him, give him a free shield. Yeah, I think he needs a free shield. <laughs> nah. <laughs> and uh, any anything, uh, Ryan? Uh, I mean. General Merrick, why not? You know, what is a general doing in an X Wing? He's gotta be good at something. That's true. <laughs> You're really good. I mean, let's let's he go. He went against insurmountable odds on the beach in the atmosphere of Scarif. I mean he him and his squad was trapped down there. They were gonna win they were gonna lose by attrition eventually. So yep. maybe he is that good. He's a general in an X Wing. Hera's a general. You made her a six. Make him a six. Let's go. There it is. Our rebellion generals. Alright, guys. So uh, we have, uh, this is going to be a long episode. We're going to hit two hours for sure. Uh, here we go. We're going to do our list of the week from last week that I skipped uh, because I was super tired. I'm a little more awake today, so we can uh, we can go ahead and jump in here. So first list comes from Chainsaw. It's a rebellion list. Make sure I have the right one open. Yes, and let's go there. So it's a rebellion list, and um, it is Nora Wexley in the Y Wing with expert handling, ion cannon turret, seismic charges, veteran turret gunner, Thane Kyrell with just the S foils, and Lando Calrissian with Leia Organa and Nine Nub. And Ryan had some stuff for it. So um, I do like this combination. Um, actually, I highly recommend. Look up the Crate Cup um, games from last year, Crate Cup 4, through Gold Squadron's YouTube page. And check out Sarah Tessum's games that she's played. I don't know if she was on two streams, but I know for sure she was on one. Um, she was flying Lando, Wedge, and Nora, which is what we're actually going to steer towards. Um, I think there's probably too many upgrades on Nora. Uh, I don't think Nora should be more expensive than the X-Wing you're taking. So let's take Veteran Turret Gunner off Nora. 
and let's also take the seismic charges off her for now and then make Thane into Wedge. Uh, it leaves you points to play with. Um, you want to keep expert handling on Nora because that actually matters for shenanigans with Lando's ability in case you do want Nora to do a coordinate, coordinated, quote unquote, from Lando barrel roll to Nora. Um, but basically, Nora's there to just be the bait. Like, she's not doing a ton of damage, but if you, you know, she's meant to be thrown into the fray anyway. She right. wants to be range one. So you support that as you need to. But, like, Wedge and Lando are there to finish the game and put out as much firepower as you can. Um, it's a, so that's why I recommend watching those games because, uh, granted, it was from, like, the first points update of second or second edition at all. So it's a little bit of a different, like, loadout. But principally, it, you'd want to apply the same methods. Um, with a five point or six points left, I think, um, throw a crack shot on Wedge. It's always valuable for him. Uh, if he gets that bullseye, it's even more detrimental for the opposing ship. Um, you got five points to play with. Uh, you can do a couple things. You can either do uh, R4 Astromech on Nora and a seismic charge, or you could do just a proton bomb on Nora. Um, I think either way, you have arguments for each one. Uh, but um, the idea is to uh, lessen the value of Nora. Uh, she's probably not often getting the double shot with veteran turret gunner, nor is it that crazy valuable for her. She doesn't have any passive mods offensively to support it. So it's better just to keep her cheap, but have a couple things that are threatening and put her in positions to uh get her ability off while being bait in a way and letting wedge and lando get the hard work done very very nice so base chassis we end up with nora with expert handling on cannon turret and then wedge with some type of smattering of upgrades and of course lando very nice. Our next squad is uh, from Chules, and it's a scum squad. Let's go ahead and bring it over here. Ah, there it is. And here he said, Hello, GSP slash Marcel. With Jank Tank Open going on, I decided to take my Jank Tank Open squad and optimize it the best I could. Um, keeping the same pilots the same so marcel you can't take out any pilots this is uh what i came up with any ideas to optimize it further let me know so we have lots Razzi in the yv666 uh with triple zero contraband cybernetics houndstooth title ketsu onyo crew and bt1 gunner a cartel spacer with ion cannon Graz the Hunter with Predator and Contraband Cybernetics, Sunny Bounder with Ion Cannon, and the Nashtaw Pup with Shield Upgrade and Contraband Cybernetics. All right. So um, the original post he wrote was that he wanted to keep everything the same, but then he said in a further post, if you change something, just make sure you keep Graz and lats the same because those are the two that he wants to play off of but let's let's keep it all the same at least for right now why does he so, want to be tortured i don't understand <laughs> what was that why does he want to be tortured i don't understand <laughs> uh so lats and graz um let's let's keep it let's keep everyone together so he's got uh ketsu and all this other stuff so let's start off by getting rid of ketsu um because I, I get the ability you know the for those who don't don't know much about lats ratsy he target locks somebody and then he takes the target lock off uh of someone at range one at the start of combat in order to track to them um so anyway let's get rid of that let's get bt1 as well um and triple zero again he wants to be at range one um but you can do better stuff with that so let us put uh, one of the things I, I like that he does is he's got contraband on a lot of these ships. So let's put Jabba the Hut on. Ooh, let's Razi Jabba. So let Jabba the Hut gives you four more uses of a um, of a of an illicit side. So it essentially lets him 
park and take actions for five turns straight <laughs> if he wants to. <laughs> uh, um, yes, I'll, yes, mother, I'll have another. <laughs> yes, I guess I will stay here one more time. Uh, and let's get rid of, um, let's see what else do we want to get rid of. Let's get rid of that shield upgrade on Nash tab. I mean, really, why do you want that on there? Yeah, actually, let's get rid of the contraband as well. So the Nash tab pub can't, he can only, um, he can only undock after you've been destroyed. So at that point, they're, uh, they're on mop up duty anyway. So, you know, whatevs, let's get rid of them. And, um, let's move that shield upgrade over to grass. All right. Raz can use a shield upgrade. Shield. Then let's put another shield upgrade on um, Lats. Okay. That leaves us four points left over. Uh, what am I missing here? Oh, take... Um, I'm missing something here. So put Dengar on Lats as well. Dengar. And I'll figure out what I'm missing. <laughs> Follow your heart. I'm at 202. No, because I'm seeing it right here on my screen. I had already built it. So the card tells spacers with an eye on. Grass has contraband and shield. Oh, no predator. There you go. So you're ending up with Lats with Jabba the Hutt crew, Dengar Gunner, Contraband Cybernetic, Shield Upgrade, and Hound's Tooth, a cartel spacer with Ion Cannon, Sunny Bounder with Ion Cannon, Grass. Oh man, I wish, really wish you could have changed that with contraband <laughs> cybernetics and shield upgrade, and then the Nash top up. Yeah, and the nice thing about this is that Lats becomes a really terrible target to shoot at because of Dengar. Uh, and if you've flown Forlan before with Dengar, you know it's just a really terrible target. And the fact that he's got a 180 degree arc and he can stay there parked makes him just. He's going to be around for a while if you really want him to be around for a while. And also, he can share the. Job of the Hut crew with Kratz, so Kratz can go back and forth a couple times. If um, if you know if you have a way of just bumping yourself into into something and keeping Lats out of the fight, but uh, he did say I can change other pilots. So let's change one pilot. Okay. Um, if you want to make this just more playable and more than just jank tank open, so let's uh, get rid of Dengar. Okay. Crew. Uh, let's get rid of this. Get rid of the shield upgrade. Getting rid of the shield upgrade. Both shield upgrades. Both of them. Oh, okay. Get get all those points. Yeah, just get them all back. And upgrade Nash Pup to a binary pirate with contraband cybernetics. All right. Binary with contraband cybernetics. Yep. Got and it. And why? And let's see. Gratz has crack shot. I'm gonna make sure they have everything on there. Crack shot. And take um I am missing three points. So, oh yeah, one more thing. And Sunny Bounder is taking Auto Blaster. Auto Blaster. Now the reason you want Auto Blaster on Sunny is because you're more more likely to with Sunny's ability, you're more likely to get two of the same result than three of the same result mathematically. So you're gonna take advantage of his ability more with an auto blaster turret anyway. And uh, with this way, you you actually have four ships that can be out on the board at the same time. You don't have to wait for Lats to blow up before the binary part, pilot can go out and do something. Okay. And with multiple Jabba the Huts and Contraband Cybernetics, you can basically shoot the binary out, uh, K-turn, take an action, redock, and just keep doing a bunch of shenanigans with, you know, you don't know who's going to K-turn and, and do something and um, have four guns out there versus three. And I think this this for the most part might for the most part might be pretty 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 playable. I mean you got two fours and then are they threes or fours? That that man the oh so the initiatives? Yeah. Uh you have three Yeah, you and have four. Two, th three or four and three ones. Um it's a lot of guns. I mean and a lot of K-turning with Jabba the Hutt. That's a total of one, two, three, plus four, seven potential K-turns or red maneuvers with actions. I, I just can't get over that Graz the Hunter, man. Like, it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> it's so bad. All right. He's got two abilities. 
It says, while you defend, if you are behind the attacker, roll one additional defense die. All right. So I guess he's good against resistance A-wings. <laughs> he's good against right? first order. <laughs> right. And while you perform an attack, if you are behind the defender, roll one additional attack die. That's good. Sure. <laughs> I'm not I convinced. Mean, initiative four, not... I'm not right. <laughs> right. That's but, you know, but contraband and multiple uses of contraband might make that make that pull off. Actually, you might be able to pull that off with uh, contrabands. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not convinced. Come on, you got to play within the rules here, buddy. I see. I see the. Players. I guess. I guess you're right. All right. Anyway, last but not least, uh, this one is for Mr. Wheel. And it is a uh, Empire list, and it's Major Rhymer. Oh, by the way, it comes from Romer, and this is uh, one of the lists I'm trying to refine and play around with. It's Ma Major Rhymer with Intimidation, Advanced Proton Torpedo, Skill Bombardier, Proximity Mine, Echo with Juke, Fifth Brother, Passive Sensors, Stealth Device, Thick Echo, and Major Vermeil with Darth Vader Crew and Shield upgrade what 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 lipstick are you gonna slap on this pig <laughs> okay uh, i mean and, that by uh, the way romer when you listen to this it's a little bit rough we mean that in joking and I, i'm excited to see what will does here for you so um you're talking about using vermil as a coordinator and uh that's not to like coordinate uh, Rhymer so he has a focus or whatever. Right. Because right? double modifying is cool. But I don't think Rhymer is that important. And in fact, Rhymer is going to be your bait in this, right? He's, he's the he's the bait you can't ignore because if you do turn your back to him, you're going to get a five dice target lock attack. <laughs> right. Um, so, so uh, and I love the advanced to proton torpedoes here, but I'm going to take everything else off of Rhymer. Intimidation, gone. Uh, skilled bombardier proxy mines while wow, hilarious uh it's eight points that uh you you uh you might not be able to use um because rhymer only has six health they're all whole and uh if he's taking locks he won't have a defensive focus which um on two agility the the focus is only gonna save you like one damage anyways so um what we are going to put on to the him is what i think is the uh required munition of choice and that's going to be cluster missiles uh cluster missiles works great with rhymer um, because they are range one to two and rhymer's ability lets you shoot zero to three uh, so you get full range with those cluster missiles uh, range zero and range three um, with them and you could double shoot very very powerful um so and then we're just going to keep them like that just advanced proton torpedoes and cluster missiles uh, as long as he can hopefully get a target lock at long range he can shoot the cluster missiles and then um if it ends up being range two you can shoot the advanced proton torpedoes uh, but like i said he's going to be your bait you just put him out on the board let uh yeah, like in the middle deploy him in the middle see if uh, the opponent takes that bait or not uh, then try to get in uh, behind them to shoot through those munitions. A lot of people K-turn with their bombers, right? Like get into that like knife fighting um, or dog, knife fighting. Like that dog fighting mentality to where you need to keep shooting the same people over and over. Rhymer doesn't actually need to take advantage of that unless he already has this lock. If you don't have a lock with Rhymer, you might as well just dip out of there and focus up. Um, so then we're going on Echo. Well, I, I have mixed feelings about Juke. On Echo, um, uh, Echo normally is not spending the evade because that decloak is so powerful that you should have it for offense. Um, I am going to leave it on. Well, I am going to take off a stealth device, though. Um, you should not be spending your evade on defense. Uh, so most likely you're only going to have like Fifth Brother or a Focus. Um, and this is a pretty aggressive echo with passive sensors on it. So you almost have no defensive tokens at all. Um, so you're going to lose that stealth device pretty quickly. So I'm just going to take it off and just assume 
that you lost it. <laughs> uh, and then we're just going to drop Vermeil completely. Um, Vermeil has this place, uh, but it's not in a three ship list, in my opinion. Um, maybe if he was carrying like the Emperor or something, I could I can maybe see some value out of him to keep Rhymer alive, right? Instead of coordinating his two kind of some uh, Emperor shenanigans. But uh, Roma here had actually th already thought about putting in Vader, and I think that's an excellent choice. Uh, so we're going to go with um, Darth Vader in the X1, and we're going to put the upgrades on him. Uh, you know it. It's Afterburners and Fire Control System. He needs these upgrades. Uh, fire Control System. There's a big debate about passive versus Fire Control System, and time and time again in my playing and flying of Darth Vader. Fire control system saves me force. You can reroll eyeballs that you would normally spend an, uh, a force for. Uh, you can keep your lock uh, and then K-turn, um, or you could just not uh, have to reacquire it, saving you force down the line. So I think it's very valuable. And after burners, uh, is uh, it, Vader's not fast enough. He needs those afterburners, and there's also some cute things you could do because afterburners is an action. Uh, you can uh, trigger Darth Vader's ability to get more actions off of that uh, boost as long as he's not stressed. Um, that leaves us with five points. Is that correct? I'm following along. Um, and this could be this could be used for a variety of things. Um, if you're worried about uh, Echo's health, slap a hull upgrade on her. If you love those bombs and things, um, put some seismics on Rhymer. Um, I'm personally just going to take it for a bid. Because um, I wasn't really seeing anything for, uh, I guess, Saturation Salvo. But I can't honestly recommend that uh, upgrade uh, to anything. So I'd probably just uh, either make it a hull upgrade on one of the two two agility ships or just take it as a full bid there um so what's your what are you going to create with darth vader and echo is uh two flanking aces and your opponent will just have to decide do we go after the easy bait which is rhymer do we try to track down echo or do we try to take down darth vader and uh hopefully if you play it right they'll essentially be distracted by Rhymer long enough to get your two aces to pincer and get around on the, their backside then. So I'd been talking about for a while that I would uh, reveal my lightsaber color because Ryan, uh, Ryan Farmer hadn't sent me, he said, oh, I'll mail you your blade and he never had. So here's my opportunity, it's May the 4th, why not? I have it now. So um, I wanna say thank you to everybody for, for watching and uh, you know that I love you guys. I love me Star Wars. I love all of you. And uh, you know, may, may the fourth be with you. Gold Squadron.